Before we start, let's reach 3,000 likes. And thanks to everyone for supporting the channel. Every Tuesday, Player Place held regular meetings. Even Ryu, the majority shareholder, made sure to attend them all without fail, considering it an opportunity to leave a positive impression on Heavenly Demon. Ryu observed Heavenly Demon, who was presiding over the meeting. And after a round of diverse opinions, the meeting drew to a close. The executives rose from their seats and exited the meeting room. Only Ryu and Heavenly Demon stayed in the room. It was an opportune moment for a private conversation. Then Heavenly Demon said, Major shareholder, or rather prophet, thanks to you we safely survived the seventh round. I'm sincerely grateful. Ryu said, Fortunately, you remembered not to surrender to temptation. Heavenly Demon added, Yes. When it happened, your words flashed in my mind. If it weren't for you, I might have given in. It's a bit embarrassing to admit, but the illusion was quite vivid, though he concealed it out of embarrassment. Ryu had already discerned the nature of the temptation Heavenly Demon faced. Then Heavenly Demon said, By the way, Prophet, I have a question. It was a question that had been on his mind for a few days now. He asked, you knew the answer, so why couldn't you secure a higher rank? It wasn't a round that demanded excessive effort. If you possessed knowledge of the round, securing the top spot would have been a breeze. So why didn't you? It was a sharp question. But Ryu answered calmly. I thought you, Heavenly Demon, also knew the answer. Why couldn't you secure the top spot? For a moment, Heavenly Demon appeared as if he had been blindsided. Then Ryu added, Even if you're aware that resisting temptation is crucial, when the moment arrives, executing this becomes quite challenging. Having experienced it firsthand, you get it, right? Heavenly Demon swiftly dispelled his suspicions and said, Yes, indeed, I understand. Got it. Yet, Instead of dwelling on his inquiry, he reproached himself for the brief lapse in his thinking and said to himself, certainly, he's not someone to underestimate just because he's young. There's a subtle blend of insight and seasoned experience. And he acknowledged that the prophet had not only demonstrated prowess in prophecy, but also seemed quite insightful and wise. From Ryu's standpoint, which aimed to encourage openness and trust, it wasn't an entirely pleasant situation. And he said to himself, it's not wise to make him overly cautious. Then Heavenly Demon inquired, Prophet, you mentioned you had something to tell me? Ryu replied, yes, I wanted to share information about round eight. And he promptly provided the information for the next round as planned. Heavenly Demon said with an expression full of happiness, Wow, this time there's a wealth of detailed information. Ryu said, that's right for round eight. He said gratefully, thank you, prophet. You always provide such invaluable assistance. I'm not sure how I can repay you. Ryu said, don't burden yourself too much. Isn't it wonderful to collaborate from the standpoint of being on the same boat? He smiled and said, thank you so much. Despite the advice not to feel burdened, Ryu continued to accumulate a sense of indebtedness. And suddenly, Heavenly Demon said, Uh, Prophet, while you're helping me, can I ask for one more favor? Ryu inquired, What favor? He said, Do you remember my fiancé from the other day? Ryu responded, Of course. Heavenly Demon asked, Is it okay to share this information with my fiancé? Ryu smiled and said to himself, Probably she already got the information from the spy. Then he said to Heavenly Demon, Certainly it's fine. I already allowed sharing when I prophesied separately back then. Consider it already permitted when round 11 becomes dangerous. He said happily, oh, thank you for allowing it. Ryu said to himself, it seemed more and more people were sharing future information, but it was fine. And if I have to lead a few people with me to the last round, it's better to make them rely on prophecy to survive until then. Smiling slyly with a compassionate expression, Ryu was about to discuss business when the bodyguard entered the conference room. There was a sense of urgency in his expression. Not missing this, Heavenly Demon asked seriously. Manager An, what's the matter? He said the chairman is here. Heavenly Demon was surprised and inquired, My father? Then he hastily rushed out. At the door, Chairman Ma Dai Cheol of Oseong Group was entering. Heavenly Demon said, Father, Chairman, why did you come here without saying anything? He said, do I have to notify anyone when I decide to visit my son's company? Heavenly Demon said. Well, even so, you should have at least given a heads up so we could prepare. His dad said, enough. I'm just going to take a look around briefly. Having shared those words, Ma Dai Chiol, gripping his curiosity, casually toured the company premises and said, you've gathered it up rather nicely. I've heard positive things. They say it had a good start. Heavenly Demon inquired, where did you pick up on that? His dad smiled and said, 
If you're asking this, then you're still too naive. And even your brothers have sent their congratulations. At the mention of brothers, heavenly demons' gaze shifted and said, Oh, those brothers who didn't bother sending a single congratulatory wreath. His dead said, Don't say that. Whether you liked it or not, they're still family. He inquired, Can we really call those who set their sights on your fortune family? His dad smiled and said, Are you any different? Heavenly Demon said, I'm only engaging in competition because I don't want to divide shares with my brothers. Didn't you agree to that, father? If I prove my skills are better than theirs, you'll acknowledge me as the successor and inherit all the property. He inquired, Right. Is that possible? There's less than a year left until the agreed-upon time. Heavenly Demon replied, Just give me a little more time. The start of this company is much more promising than the consulting we did before. We still need a few more months of observation, though. Then his dad inquired, Why did you abandon consulting? It wasn't bad enough to warrant such a change, he responded. There was no room for further growth. Besides, would you have acknowledged me to that extent? With a smile, his dad said, Hmph, certainly not. If you can't make it into the top 50 in Kozdak market cap, being 150th doesn't matter. Heavenly Demon added, That's why I gave up on that company. His dad added, a bold move, venturing into an uncertain industry. Heavenly Demon fell silent. In truth, without Ryu's suggestion, there would have been no need to switch industries. And suddenly, his dad asked, What about the idea of creating a player market? Did you think of it because you're a player? Heavenly Demon hesitated at the chairman's question and said to himself, Should I tell the truth? That it was Ryu's idea... Or should I entirely attribute it to my own merit? He had to make a choice, and he knew what the right choice was, and said to himself, Father is someone who wouldn't miss that. Inwardly sighing, Heavenly Demon honestly admitted, That idea wasn't mine. The chairman inquired what? He replied, The majority shareholder who acquired our company at 51% suggested and conceived that idea. We're working together as business colleagues now. His dad asked, It wasn't your idea? Who is this major shareholder then? Heavenly Demon turned around and said to Ryu, Major shareholder, can I have a moment? Ryu said, Oh, sure. Then Heavenly Demon added, Chairman, this is the person. Ryu said, Hello, I'm Ryu Min. The chairman maintained a poker face. However, internally he was quite surprised and said to himself, is this guy, who looks like he just turned 20, the majority shareholder? The president was doing his best to hide his surprise, finding it quite challenging given the unexpected youthfulness of the top executive of the company, and asked himself, Holding 51% of the company at such a young age? Doesn't that imply possession of assets exceeding $280 billion? Then he asked Ryu, Word is that you own 51% of this company. Is that true? Ryu replied, Yes, President. The chairman inquired, If it's all right, could you reveal the company you're affiliated with? Ryu nodded and said, My parents are deceased, and my background is rather ordinary. I was fortunate enough to accumulate that sum. Luck was on my side, allowing me to strike gold, the chairman asked. But will you pour all that money into my son's company? Ryu replied, I was confident. Then he inquired, Confident that changing the industry would lead to substantial growth? Ryu said yes. The expression was unchanged, but the president was internally astonished and said to himself, This is certainly an extraordinary young man. Even facing him directly, there was no flicker in his gaze or tremor in his voice. And luck might play a part, but often luck slips away even when it arrives. This is why there's a saying that luck is a skill. Then he asked, how old are you? Ryu replied, I'm 20 this year. The chairman said to himself, an age fitting his appearance but the attitude he displayed was anything but typical. Did my son have this level of insight and boldness at 20? Ma Dai Cheol could only shake his head. His children were talented, but this young man surpassed them. Then he inquired, Did you confidently propose this business idea? Ryu replied, I proposed it, but I only threw out the idea. Most of the detailed systems here are President Ma's work. He was surprised and inquired, Kyung Rock? As Ryu redirected the spotlight, Ma Kyung Rock was quietly surprised, unexpected as he hadn't foreseen such a statement. And Ryu added, To be honest, I didn't do much. President Ma conceptualized specific systems, crafted various business ideas, and managed them. I merely provided the framework. President Ma filled in the bones and flesh all night long. He inquired, Is that true? Ryu replied, Yes. It might look good if he were the chairman of Osung Group, but Ryu was actually 
actually promoting Heavenly Demon. However, Ma De Cheol, with extensive experience and knowledge, couldn't be unaware of this fact. And he said to himself, Hmm, this young man knows how to uplift others and not be greedy, huh? He couldn't help but consider him a truly promising talent. He even wanted to make him an apprentice and teach him proper business management. Suddenly, he realized what he was thinking and said to himself, Hmm, am I getting too old? Why am I having such thoughts? Then Ma De Cheol cleared his mind with a cough and turned away and said, All right, with this level of passion, there's nothing to worry about in the future. Saying that, Ma Dai Sheol moved away without a word of farewell, and he didn't turn his head once. Then Heavenly Demon said, Major Shareholder, you spoke really well. Ru chuckled and said, You don't know how nervous I was inside. But Heavenly Demon didn't smile. There was something he wanted to ask seriously. Guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and support the channel financially.